What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be playing around with a title called Thrive. Heavy Lies the Crown. This is a apocalyptic medieval city builder that takes place on one giant map where there's like diplomacy and like other factions that you've got to deal with. I don't know too much about the game. They've got a demo that I've been waiting for, actually. I tried to record a demo of it a couple months ago, but the day that I had time to record it, they took the demo down because if it weren't for bad luck. But anyways... Let's go ahead and dive on into Thrive. If after watching this, you wanted to get some colony survival medieval apocalypse action for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. You can play the demo right now. On top of that, you can also check out a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream where I play games like this most days of the week. I'd love to have you. And let's go ahead and start off with single player here. So in Nissimore, we can be from Noswia, Upadine. Oshath, Alnor, Draenoth, Asnor. I feel like Oshath is the only one that embodies me. Oh, I get to pick a national flag, huh? I want to be the kitty. Let's be the let's be the feline. Let's can I change the color of it or am I like do I have to be blue dabba dee dabba die? Oh, they've got one with a rhinoceros on it, dude. I always wanted a pet rhinoceros. Let's do that. Two months since the fall of Aldemor, since you gathered up the survivors and set forth new towards a new home. Nisimor is the future, a land free from the terrors of the past. Here you will raise up a new kingdom guided by the loyal advisors who form your Curia. Your advisors are quite knowledgeable, but none can deny their own self-interest. Each has a plan for your reign. In the end, you alone must set the tone of your rule. Where do your interests lie? In executing my advisors! That's how I begin. It sounds like they're up to something. Hang them all! I guess we will rise with vigilance, I suppose. That sounds good. Would I like to play the tutorial? Sure, why not? Let's do a tutorial. So we've got a little caravan right here. And as you can see, this is actually like a greater world map. We can go look at everybody else's stuff if we want to. But for right now, let's take our caravan and turn it into a keep. It looks like we have a nice little chunk of open land over here. So we'll go ahead and give that a go. I don't want to be too close to the main road, just in case invasions come on in. I want them to do like a short walk before they get to me. And so we'll go over here, and this seems like a good enough spot for a caravan, I guess. Let us deploy the keep. The keep, that's not much of a keep. That's just a pile of barrels. Okay. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, the keep is like a separate thing. Oh, look at my little guys over here. Springing into work. Ooh, I like the incremental building. It's definitely got like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, like vibe to it. All right, so next we need to build a primitive stockpile. We can find it in the build tab in the farming tab. A wise ruler will also have road networks. Okay. Well, then, let us construct forth... Oh, the dirt road hath already been deployed for us. Okay, we'll, like, run one out that way. And then we'll run one out that way. Doesn't look like they need to actually build the roads, a la something like uh, Farthest Frontier. But we do have a primitive stockpile right here. I sort of dig that. How big are houses? Houses are, like, a 4x4. Four four. Okay. So if we do like the stockpile, right, there's room for four right there, but we do one extra for a road. Because this is one of those games where it has that radius where it arbitrarily will be like, oh, people are cranky, they can't get to the stockpile. And so instead of doing it by the roads and the links of them, which to me feels more logical, they've done it this way. Let's get that stockpile up and running, get that thing mashed out, see if it's going to stock our piles in a fashion that we find to be acceptable. The piles have been stocked. And so, yeah, I already noticed the area of influence, so I don't think I need too much help there. What you got next for me, champ? Build a logging camp and a quarrier camp. Okay, we don't have any rocks around. We pretty much exclusively have trees. Are those rocks right there? Like, do those count as little rocks? I think they count as little rocks, maybe. Possibly. I can't click on the trees either, so, you know. Uh, let's go ahead, and we've got ourselves a food store, farmer house, well, wood chopper. Don't really need that for right now. Oh, the logging camp has a little icon of a tree. Okay, so let's put the logging camp in, I guess, right there. 
and then the quarriers camp hopefully they'll go get some of the rocks off the ground and we can put that right there doesn't look like there's a build time on either of those and it does look like we may be able to manually adjust simply click the structure and adjust the slider mm, okay gotcha yeah you know, let's make that a little bigger then there we go our villagers are now springing into action and are now employed Next thing it wants me to do is build some food stores. It looks like the food stores will actively line up with what we're already doing over here. So let's just put the food store right there. And then I'll try to mash out some roads while we're in the area. There we go. Let me get a little bit more of that. And then we'll have like a thoroughfare of houses right here that go around. Our areas of influence are going to be a little bit overlapped and possibly not work perfectly the way we want them to. But hopefully it'll be okay. Looks like we are officially taking in stone, and we are officially taking in logs. However, the transit time is going to be an issue here. I think maybe once we get through with our glut of building, it might be okay. But I was trying to set this up such that, well, people would have access to the stockpile once we start building homes, I guess. They're now officially bringing the logs on in. I don't know how many logs it's going to take. 20 of them, I guess. So hopefully we just squeaked by. Looks like they're starting construction. I really like incremental building. I can't help it. I think incremental building is great in games like this. It's one of those little things that gets me excited about a title when they build like the little sticks and the scaffolds and everything else to get things set up. All right. So people need wells in order to keep themselves from, I don't know, having enough water or wanting enough water. Something. We'll put it in, it looks like it has a 4x4 four four footprint, the same as a house does. So we'll put the well over there. The well is going to take us some stones and some logs. Luckily, it looks like we have most of that stuff stored up already, so it should just rapid fire on over there, and then we should be good, I think. It did indeed rapid fire, so dig deep down into there and find that aquifer. You find that thing, it's be very, very important. I have a powerful thirst, I drink a lot of water. All right, I discovered they have these little squirty bottles that put, like, flavor inside your water. I was already a big water drinker, but I'm going to be honest with you. My water addiction has spiraled out of control now that I have those little flavor squirties you put in there. I always do the one that makes it taste like tang. Vosser is done. It is producing zero water at the moment. But that also looks like maybe we don't have people employed inside of there. How many people do I have that are, like, ready to rock right now? Am I a little bit overloaded? They want me to build 12 houses for farmers for right now. I think I can do that. We'll give this guy the corner lot. Lucky ducky. And then we'll put this guy right here. And see, the plan is coming together. If that fits perfectly right there, oh my god, it does. We discovered the perfect grid. I'm a grid god. My grid cannot be stopped. I had a feeling it was going to work out like that. So technically I planned this too, which is like powerful for me. I don't normally plan things. I just kind of do things. And then I complain when the outcome isn't what I want with zero planning. I think that should be enough houses right there. I've got them stamped out. I've got my thing going on. Luckily, the game is pretty easy to gridify. I know some people have complaints about road-based building and aren't, like, a big fan of it. I don't really care. I just think when it comes to stockpiles, I don't like the radius thing. I like it when it looks at the road lengths between areas so that if you built, like, a good grid, everybody... It just always felt odd to me that this building has a radius, and if there's a guy right here... Due to a one meter difference, he's like, nope, can't make it to the stockpile. Taking three more steps is way too difficult for me. I'm like, but this is food. You need that to survive, brother. Like, nope, I'm not going one step further. Not even starvation can compel me. We have a big spooky purple meter up here that says the Walgrim's presence too. From the opening video that they made me watch, it said to press escape to cancel, but I had to watch the whole video. It wouldn't cancel. Uh, this right here is like the apocalyptic influence that's coming around. It's like this purple mist that comes up from the ground and kills everything. So we'll see how it goes. So it looks like we've got a number of, like, things we need to fulfill over on this side, too. Not necessarily Anno style, but it looks like it just kind of compiles 
all of the things that are making people happy versus what's making people upset. And it looks like we can bring out a bigger chunk of this as well. And I'm, I'm guessing they're going to slowly unfold mechanics that will gradually leech away people's happiness and force you to keep ever-expanding industries doing their thing. We're starting to get a good log stockpile, so that's good. Now we just need to get firewood. I'm all out of workers. So I would consider maybe taking a couple guys off quarrying. Just to make that happen. And then our wood chopper is over here just so we can maybe get some of the basics done. That space is occupied right there, and I don't know if I want that to be occupado. So maybe we won't do that. Maybe we'll put it over there, and we'll just make him go for a little bit longer. Oh, he can't reach the stockpile. Okay, the game hates it. Never mind, I take it back. There we go. We'll demolish that, and we'll put it a little bit closer to our footprint, I guess. Because it does need to be inside the radius of the stockpile here. Things make it a little bit screwy. We've got like an empty lot over here on the side. I don't think it'll matter altogether that much though. Take 16 logs for that. Well, we're stacking up a little bit of loot, so I think we'll be okay. I was worried about our throughput with the long transit time with our loggers going all the way over to the stockpile here. But since everything has to be near the stockpile anyways in order to get constructed in the first place or function... There may be a better way to finagle it out, but for now, I think we've done the best we can with what we have. It does look like we have a place here where we can fiddle around with all of our various people that work other places. We'll take down the quarrier camp. We'll take down, like, oh, the logging camp has priority. Gotcha. So we have priority of job sites. Okay. Fair. I guess bring them up above the quarrying camp, I suppose. And now we have wood choppers. I don't know if they'll automatically swap between jobs in order to make it effective, but I need some more villagers. That's kind of like the feeling that I've got myself. We still have people over here that are saying they have no houses too, so it may not be a terrible idea to set up like a few more suburbs around here. Just to make the whole thing function a little better. Oh, we've made it to a new event. What does this do? The foundations of your settlement have been laid, but much must be done to encourage its growth. Your Curia, a small group of advisors, will help you find your way. Bodie Declan and Duke Donovan Stanton are those who remain from the Fallen King's Curia. Sir Ossian Hayward, a trusted knight and friend, has been added to round off the group. Together, you must determine where best to focus your efforts. The solution is easily found, Your Majesty. Without our people, we could not have come this far. Their resilience should be rewarded, instilling confidence and joy. It is true, Chancellor, that we've overcome much. The tragedies of the past are but a few steps behind us. This is why we should focus on securing and protecting what we're starting here. Only with a strong defense can we find the courage to rise once more. Both reasonable positions, gentlemen. Yes, Your Highness, reasonable to be certain, but yet both overlooking that we must reliably maintain and grow a kingdom, its coffers. Without sufficient coin, it will be difficult to grow beyond simple thatch and stone. We must inspire people. Fair points all. Our citizens, security, wealth, all important to foundations. Let's go safety first. Our sovereign. We're still unfamiliar with this land. As such, we must remain on guard and procure the means to defend and fortify our fledgling kingdom. T'was not long since we side by side took up arms in the defense of our beloved land and the king. I'll never question your desire to protect Hayward, but we must first secure the settlement's wealth as that is the key to our progress. You are both mistaken, if I may. Your Highness, Hayward's request creates tensions with the locals and the dukes. Well, now is it the time to be contemplating coin. We must establish a sense of community first. Okay, uh, let's... I agree with Sir Hayward. I already said what I said, all right? I said what I said, and we're gonna live with it. He wants me to build some wooden fences. Okay. That does look like a wooden fence right there, however... It does appear to be quite expensive to do that, so hopefully we'll unlock some new farmers first. Because the wood fence is unfortunately outside of our ability right now. Now that the firewood's done, they're talking to me about the possibility of having farms. Which I think is probably a good idea. People like food. It looks like we can only produce apples right now, and this is going to break one of my fundamental rules of life, which is never have more than two apples. Otherwise... You will take a dumpy the likes of which the world has never seen before. I don't know what it is about apples, man. They get up into your system and then it's just a problem. Uh, we'll probably want another food store over here to largely service the farms that we're going to be putting out. I have a population growth, which is really good. We got one extra population. 
we may need to do a second stockpile over here. Just to keep people somewhat happy, I guess. Like, it doesn't even want to work from over there, so... The stockpile system, I think, is going to take some getting used to. It does appear as those stockpiles can kind of be built wherever, though, and it's not that big of a deal. The downside is every stockpile needs to have workers, which is then depleting the greater number that we have. So we'll see how that spin ends up working long term. All of these places require people to actually habitate inside them and make them work. So we've got two people there. Can I take a couple people off? Yeah, like take a couple people off these... There we go. Make them a little bit less employed than they currently are. And then we shall create forth the apples. Summon them for the great and powerful kingdom of Appledom. So one thing I am missing here is it doesn't appear as though anywhere it tells me how many unemployed I have for how this all functions, which is actually a piece of information the player needs to know. I'm not a huge fan of it auto-assigning things to buildings, too. Like, I'm not a massive fan of that system, how you create, like, a priority and then it goes for it. Don't know how I feel about that. I think I would much rather manually control every single one myself and just clicky, clicky, clicky it on in. It looks like you can sort of do that, but without access to information about how many unemployed I have, I'm still forced to fall back on this system over here. And I'm kind of like, meh, about that. Let's take off a couple of builders, I guess. And we'll see where people get sorted out to. I don't think we've really been having problems with building to begin with. It seems like it gets done pretty snappy with how it is. So maybe we can afford to go back on our labor there ever so slightly. It looks like it assigned everybody to the apple orchard. So I'll get two people off right there. And it looks like they auto reassigned over to the quarrier camp. Hopefully we don't get a fire anytime soon. That's what I'm really terrified about because I can't get anybody to work in the well because I don't have enough people yet. Let's let it run till we get our 30 apples. So while the apples have been produced, more and more people have moved into our society. So that's good. Uh, we should look to increase our farmer population to 40. Okay, we'll get that done. I'll try to knock that out as fast as possible. Most of the houses are still mostly unoccupied, so I think the few people that we had around that had the little house icon above their heads, they just take a little while to settle on in. I'll probably try to keep this entire area just for farming, and then we've got a lot of population moving in right now, so that's good. All of our jobs are filled up, and it looks like we have three unemployeds at the moment. That's kind of where I'd like to be. So let's go ahead and repopulate our workforces over here with some of the extra people. Make sure we don't cruise by the seat of our pants with, you know, inefficient industries and things, spitting things on out. And while we wait, I kind of wanted to go, so like there's a Grimrock camp right there, so we are going to have combat. There are enemies over there. Has anybody settled any other lands in Wormaxa? Can I go look at their colony? Ooh, I can't. Ooh. Look at you. Look at you. You got three swimming pools? Man. Three fountains? Four fountains. They got all kinds of goodies in there. When do I get that sick-ass building? I want that over there. My society's looking a little... Looking a little mangy right now. Oh, by the way, this is all one map. If I wanted to, I could pan all the way back to my city. All the way. Like, it's an unbroken map that has no loading zones on it. Which is actually kind of a cool technical accomplishment. We also have a hemp farm over here. Since we have extra people around... I personally don't see a major problem with just getting like a little strip of the we'll get a little little strip of the old weed fields over here to get people going. It makes our clothing, it gives us something to do in our recreation time. It makes the peasants giggly. And when the peasants are giggly, I don't need to worry about them rampaging up to my keep and murdering me with pointy implements in the flame. Alright? It's interesting. I don't know if people come in to fill slots when you're getting immigration. So it says we have unoccupied slots oh that one's not ready to go yet but it doesn't have like the lock on it okay so you only get immigration if you have extra housing like period that explains it i was sitting around just being like i wonder when i'm gonna have immigration and now i know and knowing as gi joe told us maybe at least some fraction of the battle We'll just kind of like round this out with some roads over here. Make sure everybody's nice and happy. 
Uh, I already did the hemp farm, so we don't even need to worry about that, but they want me to do an outfitter now to supply clothing. I'd probably say that's a decent enough spot for it, I guess. We'll put it right there. The outfitter will live right in front of my home so that I can have the most beautiful mink coats. Another event has popped. A Welgrim Surge. What does that mean? The food supply has been affected by a mysterious rot. Sir Ocean, Ocean Hayward brings before you a young man who followed the caravan for nearly the entire trek, careful to keep his distance. He claims that he is an orphan, that the Welgrim brought illness to his village, which is a stone's throw away from Aldemore's gates. He asks for a place in the new settlement. He looks for a home amongst us, or so he says, and what he says is little, but there is truth in it. The child quivers, a boy, perhaps in his eighth, maybe tenth year, his clothing is caked in mud and dust. Twigs and leaves adorn his shoulder-length hair. His eyes are shy, his fleeting glances mixed with sorrow and fear. A brave journey, yet a cautious one. If we wanted to join our settlement, why did you speak up as you traveled? Why wait? He cannot find an answer and does not speak. What happened to his family? His village near to Aldemore felt the effects of the decay. It appears his family was lost to it. Only he remains. But are we not certain? I feel certain, your highness. His caution instills doubt. I disagree respectfully. Tis the caution of one who has nothing left and struggles to survive, but refuses to give up. Surely we could find use for him here if someone is... I mean, take him into your home then, Sir Ossian. The boy longs for a fresh start after the turmoil experience. He can work the fields and earn his place. Okay. We will find, I mean, if we're going to be cruel to children, I feel like that sets our kingdom off on, on a bad foot when we're, you can't start out suspicious of eight-year-old children, you know what I mean? Uh, your citizens recognize their struggles and hardships in the boy. They have welcomed him with open arms with many willing to give him a new home. A kindness that benefits all as there are now more hands to grow the land. Fair enough. Uh, it looks like our food got cut down pretty strong, so I guess you get a bad event every time this fills up, and it looks like it fills up every six days or so. Yeah, all right. It looks like our stockpiles... Oh, maybe they're not even bringing them over to here. It looks like our stockpiles are linked, so they actually have, like, Ansible transmission of goods, so as long as you have a network, you should be okay. And like that, the outfitter appears to be supplied from our actually largely growing stockpiles right now. We have lots of new people moving in. Things appear to be going decently well for the time being. All right, tannery's open. How are we looking on employeds right now? We have 13 unemployed. That's actually really good for us. So they should start producing clothing. And as far as I can tell, when they have access to clothing, they should upgrade or something. It looks like we have different classes of villagers. Like I'm already seeing them use terminology like farmer, laborer, noble. That kind of stuff, and so I'm guessing we're trying to increase tax revenue by making these houses nicer a la Anno. Which is fine by me, because that's a system that I've always liked. My observations after about 40 minutes of playing the game here, sans edits, are that it's a little bit mechanical and soulless. So they've got the city builder portions on in here. But it's very mechanical, like your little villagers just, I go here, do this, I go here, I do that. Uh, the buildings aren't broken up at all either, they all have the exact same model, like all of the houses. So there's no randomization in the creation of the houses over here. Which means that you are going to get some similar looking sprawl. My advice would to be to kind of add in, in my opinion, a little bit more soul, a little bit more personality from what I'm seeing so far, because mechanically the game works perfectly fine. It works so mechanically fine that it comes across as mechanical, though. And so that would be my main worry as someone that's really big on atmosphere, really big on ambience with games like Frostpunk or whatever. I find that that really ties together a game, and they have this really cool hook when it comes to this fog that's creeping in and kind of stealing people and ruining your supplies and causing problems. And they've got the atmosphere in the opening video when they're describing what the game's going to be. Now it's time to kind of get that in here as well and add a little bit more human personality to the game. People standing around, so your unemployed villagers, they're not being used right now. What if the unemployed were actually out and about in the village, but they stood on street corners and they talked to each other, you know? What if, what if they, they stood in front of the stockpile and threw a ball back and forth? What if, you know, things like that that make the place feel alive. If you have nobody that's idle, fair enough, leave it all mechanical. But we have like 15 people that are unemployed, and so they should be kind of just like idling around the village 
adding that personality and humanity to the overall thing. Uh, entertainment is key. We want beer, meat, and cider. Yes, we do. I say that wholeheartedly. I love all of those things. All of those things are awesome to me. Do I have any cool spots that I can just slide this on into? It looks like that's inside the coverage zone. Let's try that. And then I'll do a central road that runs up right there, and we'll get the cider going. And then once the cider's all rocked out, it looks like we need a fermenter, so there's, like, multiple stages to this thing that we must accomplish. And then it said something about a tavern in here. I built two fermenters. That was my bad. There's our big old fermentation barrel right there. A little bit of apple juice, a little bit of sugar. That's all it takes. And so it looks like this guy, is he outside the range? Or is he just not supplied right now? We'll see if he starts producing. He's got an icon right there that's got me a little bit nervous. Maybe that just means that they don't have the thing that they need in order to produce. It does. Okay. The one with the red slash across it. I was going to say, I swear to God that I got this guy inside the radius of all this that was functioning. Let's wait and see what happens. See if these houses upgrade or anything. Oh, you can move them over to armor and cloaks and things as well. I wonder if the clothing that's available for the individual dictates their actual appearance. Or if it's just purely job, like if I assign someone to the barracks, which I found down here. We do have the ability to make war. There will be armies or something at some point in the game. Which makes sense, because some of these places look a little bit threatening. You know, we got barbarians and bandits running around all over the place, causing all kinds of problems. I figure it's only a matter of time before they come knock on the door to meet us. Uh, we should have the stuff to make a wood fence, though, now, which would be kind of cool. I don't know exactly what direction I want to spread in. Understanding the production. Yeah, we've got health and happiness and everything else. Can I get like a gatehouse out here? Is that a thing that we have access to? Maybe I'll just put in a couple of fences over here to start making us safe from the outside. Oh, and it looks like roads have to attach to the fences as well. Okay, we'll throw those things on out there. I don't know if they'll build them, but... Having the actual walls themselves attached to a road is kind of curious. The walls are now happy. They have been placated with the building of civic infrastructure. It says it wants me to click on a fermenter, and I clicked on the fermenter, but it's not giving me credit for it right now inside the tutorial, so I'm not exactly sure what it wants me to do next here. Clicked on the fermenter, as said, but uh, not sure. Oh, is this ready for like an upgrade? Is that what that means right there? It's got like a little icon above it. So now that we're sitting on top of a whole bunch of lumber, they want me to build a lumber yard where we can start actually planing off planks. I feel okay with that idea. Let's go over here maybe. That sounds good. We'll put them on the road right next to the keep because I love the sound of sawmills in the dark. One of my favorite sounds in all honesty. There's a gap in my wall right now and that greatly concerns me. Put that right there just to like patch that. There was a little puff of purple smoke right there too that worried me on out. I wonder if these are going to start upgrading. There's definitely an icon right there, but there's no actual guide to what the iconography means. Looks like there's a button right here that I can push for 200 bucks to make it nicer. Apple production may be a tad low for what we're trying to do out here too. I don't know if we actually have a statistical regression that tells us our ins and our outs, but that's going to be another thing they want to get in there. You know what I'm talking about with the line graph that says, like, apples go up, stonks, all that kind of stuff? It, it makes decision-making easier when it comes to building up a colony to figure if you're on the decline or if things are on the up and up. And so I'd like to see that around here somewhere, too. It may be in here somewhere, but it looks like we have expertises. Okay. So we can give bonuses. So we can pay people out bonuses in order to make them stronger. I can't go into the mastery tree yet just to figure it out. But it looks like we're going to have some aspect of lawmaking as well while we're out here. I'll probably just keep the walls where they're at. Lumberyard, you done over here? Lumberyard appears to be done. 
This is Thrive. My only thing about it is the game feels a little bit over-mechanical, so everything feels like an automaton rather than feeling like a living, growing village. But everything functions here. There's been no bugs, there's been no problems, and honestly, I haven't had the labor issues that I have in a lot of other games, too, where people aren't doing the thing that they're supposed to be doing. So maybe that lack of autonomy and maybe that lack of personality is why everything functions so efficiently. But our colony does come across as more of a robot to me then it comes across as like a living, breathing place that people inhabit. And so that's probably what I would focus on personally, is getting that on in there to give it that same theming that other games have. You have this really, really wonderful hookup here that you can use to do it, too. And so you're already in a good spot where it shouldn't be too terrible to implement. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we are slowly working our way towards an armory and a barracks so that we can have cooler guys. These guys have all of their needs fulfilled, which has me kind of curious what happens next, or does that just mean we have a lot of happiness? In other games, it means that this house is like doop, 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 and it gets nicer, and it will have like, you know, stone walls or whatever, and then you get more tax revenue. But I don't know if that's how it functions inside of this one. Alas, I only have so much time to pitch a game to you guys, and so it's time for me to go. I will see you all later. You can play this demo for yourself if you wanted to put some more hours into it and figure it out for yourself. I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Up until then, it's time for me to go. Bye, folks.